In today's video, I want to show you the eBoss filament dryer. But before we get into today's video, I just want to give a quick shout out to all of my lovely Patreon supporters. I love you guys so much. You make this channel what it is. And here are Bob's picks for last month's GGGGs. Each month, Bob the Beholder picks some of my Patreon supporters to receive gratitude gifts. And for this past month of October of 2024, David M. is receiving a pledge for the Rahod Kickstarter. Brandon B. is receiving a printed version of the Monster Slayer's Shadow Curse Kickstarter. And Dane B. is receiving $100 to go towards the Into the Dark Dungeon Silver Mine Kickstarter. Go ahead and use the link below to go to my Patreon page to find out more about this month's gratitude gifts, which will be populated as the month goes along. It only takes a dollar to join and support my Patreon channel, which gives you a chance of receiving one of these gratitude gifts. So eBoss did send me this filament dryer, although I do not receive payment so that I can have honest reviews of products. And if you are interested, go ahead and use my affiliate link below if you want to purchase this machine. But is it worth it because it is a little bit higher in terms of price tag at $140. So what makes the features worth sort of the higher price tag or whether or not you should get one of their cheaper options like the single filament dryer, which is more like $50. Before though we get into this, I do want to share that I don't typically have a need to dry out my filaments. I almost exclusively use PLA in my filament printers and every once in a while I will use PETG, but I have not really used any of the more exotic filaments. And I do know that drying out those more exotic filaments is important than possibly PLA because for the most part, I don't have failed prints because of high moisture getting inside of my PLA. And I do live in a pretty humid part of the country in St. Louis. Our summers do get pretty hot and humid but all of my printers are in my basement where some of that is mitigated. But if I do leave out my filaments for a while, they will absorb some of the air moisture. And that can create prints that have a lack of a smooth surface on them when you have high moisture inside of your filament. So it is a good practice to try to keep your filaments dry or if you have left them out for a while to go ahead and run them through an air dryer which is exactly like this machine here. Usually I don't have to do that because my storage system is really simply one of these Home Depot buckets with a airtight lid that you can purchase for relatively cheaply. And here is the brand that I found at my local Home Depot. Then I also purchased one of these dryers that you can plug in once it gets absorbs enough of the um, humidity because there's a little indicator showing these beads they turn from yellow to green once it needs to be plugged in and dried out again so this is a great method and I just have a bunch of spools in here I can typically fit five one kilogram spools inside each bucket I have three of these actually and that's enough for all of the filament that I use and then every once in a while I'll need to plug this in to dry it out. So if you have a pretty good storage system, I don't think you need a filament dryer per se, but it is handy to have one if you have left out your filament on your machine, particularly for a long time. The other great feature about this machine is not only does it function as a filament dryer because you need to have some kind of heat happening in order to dry it, but you can also set it beside your machine and have it feed the filament directly to the machine. So not only can it dry it, but it can be your storage unit for your filaments. And as you can see here, you can have two of them inside of the box and there are free rollers down here that allow it to just go ahead and feed directly into the machine. Not powered, but just passively will roll. What you see here as it is drying is it does slowly turn the spools around which I think is a, actually a key feature because a lot of the filament dryers that are out there only have heat coming from the bottom and that's the case here for the EBOS is the heat is coming up from the bottom and heating up the filament and therefore that's how it dries out the filament and gets rid of the moisture. But when it's not turning, most of the heat really stays down here at the bottom and it, you don't have even coverage of heat throughout the entire roll. 
So the thing that I think is a key feature for this EBOS machine is the fact that it slowly rotates the entire spool as it goes around. Another feature that I like about this is you have full control over um, the amount of time and the temperature that it is going to dry out your filament. And it does have some defaults that are programmed in. So for example, for the PLA, which is what I use, it automatically sets it to the right temperature and it will uh, go for four hours. Now, if I have a full roll, I will probably go longer than four hours, but I love the fact that it has presets for most of your uh, filaments and even some of the exotic ones. As well, it will default to a certain time period based off of the filament type. But again, you can override that and basically have it go as long or as little as you need it to go. I did have to assemble this top part, this case, which uh, wasn't hard at all. You need just uh, a, use the included Allen wrench to put in the screws to put this together. Also, you can use this machine for three kilogram spools and it does come with an extender, which will raise this up. I've never used more than one kilogram spools on my machines. So just keep that in mind in case you are using up to three kilogram spools. This is one of the few machines that will, that will actually fit that inside of here. The other thing I appreciate is that it does come with some spare parts, an extra roller, as well as an extra motor that is turning the machine. So in case that motor goes out, you can replace the motor pretty easily. So also all of the screws and the Allen wrench in order to put it together. So everything that is needed is inside of this kit. I will say though, at $140, it is on the more expensive side. So unless you are living in a location where you have to regularly dry out your filament, I don't know if spending that much money for a machine like this is worth it. EBOS does have a smaller single spool um, heater that will dry it out and I would suggest that if you are infrequently needing to dry out your filaments because again, that's at a third of the cost at $50. So it really depends. I do think that this has a ton of features to it and it definitely does work. But again, how much are you gonna be using it and how many times do you need to actually be drying two spools at the same time? Again, you can use this as your regular filament holder and it will keep things relatively dry. But at the same time, if you're a user like me that doesn't need to dry out filament that much, I don't know if the high price tag is worth it. One of the key things to remember too is that you don't want the heat to be so high that it actually melts your filament. So I do appreciate the fact that you do have presets to make sure that you're not uh, overheating your filament because that's one of the hazards as well. So having a dedicated one versus a DIY version of a filament dryer, again, I think might be worth it if you are regularly needing to dry it out. One of the other neat features in this, if you are using this Azure dry box next to your printer and you're regu regularly gonna be feeding to that is there are slots in here where you can put desiccant packets, your silicon packets, uh, and all you do is just grab the ones that come with your filament bag. Typically I get one uh, with the filaments that I use and you can stick it in there and that will aid in keeping things dry. But otherwise, I do think it's a little bit overpriced, but it does do the job. And I really, really do like the fact that it rotates the spools. That feature really is um, makes it a little bit more unique some, than some of the other models that I found. So if that is really something that you're doing regularly um, and you need to be doing two spools at a time because you're doing a lot of printing, I do think that this is a good option. And again, use my affiliate link below if you are interested in purchasing this. It is also available on Amazon, but I've noticed that the Amazon price, at least uh, since the time of this recording, is actually higher than what you can get from eBoss's site. And eBoss does provide free shipping when you do purchase this unit. Hit the like button and subscribe if you found this helpful for you, as I am going to continue to come out with more videos, not only reviewing products, but also showing you projects that you can do with your 3D printers. Happy printing, happy gaming. We'll see you next time.